Hey y'all, this is Enslow here at Night Owl Forge. Um, sorry my shop's kind of a mess right now, but I wanted to make this quick video. I've been seeing people post um, videos asking for criticisms on their swinging technique. So I tried to just uh, help people out and write comments, um, but it's kind of hard to describe swing mechanics um, in comments. So I decided to make this hopefully quick video um, talking about swinging technique and being an accurate and efficient blacksmith. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is body positioning in regards to the anvil. We don't wanna be standing far away. We generally want to turn our hips. We want, the thing that's gonna help our accuracy the most is keeping our body and the hammer close to our body throughout the swing. Okay, anytime we extend our limbs out and try to do stuff, we're gonna lose accuracy. So one of the biggest components of being accurate is being close to the anvil and keeping your arm close to you throughout the swing. All right, so for right-handed people, you're usually gonna want the horn on your left. You're gonna want your hips about 45 degrees um, in regards to the anvil. And you're gonna to wanna to be pretty close. I'm not very far from the anvil here, only about four or five inches. Okay, so a quick note about that is uh, you see some guys when they start out and they put their anvil on a big stump or like a stack of pallets or you know some kind of stand that they created. Um, generally, the bad thing that I see happening is guys will have their stands much wider than their anvil. That won't allow you to get close to it. So you want the footprint of your stand to be not much larger than the footprint of your anvil. You also don't want, you know, people like to strap down their anvil, which is good, you should. But you don't wanna put eyelets out here, especially on this side where I'm smithing. You don't wanna put any kind of hardware on this side of the stand. It's gonna be in the way and you're gonna hit your shins on it. So don't do that. All right, other than body positioning, the other important thing with the hammer swing before I get into the full mechanics of it is how you grip the hammer, okay? A lot of hammers will have two kind of areas that you can grip them on. So a lot of people say, okay, well just grab the lower area if you want more force. That is true. Angular momentum, more acceleration, more force. That's true. However, when you grab the hammer down here, a very small movement in your wrist is going to equal a much larger movement up here. That makes ac being accurate much more difficult because, you know, every swing your wrist might do something a little different. If you're holding out here, that little difference is going to make a big difference. Okay, so we grip the hammer a couple of inches below the hammer head. All right, we don't want a tight grip. We want the hammer to actually to be able to pivot in our hand. So we're not gripping it super tight. Most of the grip is in the, between the forefinger and the thumb, right? The lower fingers are just kind of loose. We want it to rotate and pivot. Um, and then the other last thing that I, I'm sure someone would point it out if I didn't talk about it in this video is where your thumb is. We don't do this where our thumb is over the top of the handle, okay? That's gonna move your wrist, right? If I try to, pivot the hammer, that's moving my wrist, okay? Any kind of wrist movement all day long is gonna create problems for your wrist, your arm, elbow, all kinds of stuff. You don't wanna give yourself carpal tunnel, tennis elbow, anything like that, okay? So don't put your thumb up there because it's gonna force your wrist to move, all right? So we grip it and we kinda like, most of the pressure is there, all right? So that's positioning, gripping the hammer. I'm gonna just talk about kind of the mechanics of a full swing. And when I talk about a full swing, this is a swing I'm using when I'm really drawing out a lot of metal, okay? I do a lot of blade smithing, so I'm not out here with my thin little knife going to town on it, right? I'm out here with my knife tinking on it. So it kind of depends what swing you use um, based on the work that you're doing. But this as a full swing, when you're really trying to move metal, this is approximately what you should be doing. Um, this is a technique that I've kind of picked up through 
going to conferences, watching masters, talking to masters, watching videos, so on and so forth. Is it perfect technique? Probably not. If people want to criticize my technique, feel free to. I'm all open to any kind of criticisms y'all have because we're all here to just become better, right? The only way to be better is to identify where you're not the best. All right, so when we start the swing, we want the hammer to be really high, okay? The higher the hammer is, the more distance it's gonna have to accelerate, all right? So force equals mass times acceleration squared. Okay, so with acceleration being squared, the more acceleration we have, it's gonna be exponentially more force. All right, so we start up here to get more force, okay? When I'm at the top of my swing, my upper arm is parallel to the ground, my lower arm is perpendicular, my shoulder and my elbow are 90, and the hammer is kind of rotated back a little bit, okay? I'm kind of a little out here right now, but when you see, when I do the forging part of this video, you'll see how close I am to my body. Okay, so we start up here, the hammer's kind of sagging back, we start our movement with the shoulder first. Okay, that's gonna begin our acceleration of the hammer downward on that pivot. Okay, then we're gonna add our elbow pivot on top of our shoulder pivot. So they're both now gonna start moving, okay? So that's gonna start adding more acceleration to the swing. And we finish that swing like cracking a whip, okay? so. You're up here, you're gripping the hammer kind of loosely, move your shoulder, elbow, and then right when a hammer comes down and contacts your piece, you want the hammer to rotate and kind of be like the tip of a whip cracking. Okay, you don't want to move your wrist and do this thing, like that's going to wear you out. You want the hammer to rotate the last second. Okay, so I'm going to heat up the forge and I'll do a demonstration of a heat of forging with my swing. Um, and hopefully that will give some people ideas and help them out when they're trying to work on their technique. Uh -huh.